Before I begin this review, I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of the people who commented on my first wedding planner review. Because of all your kind comments and enthusiasm, I was inspired and I wrote my own cozy mystery book. I would not and could not have done it without your help, so thank you very much. If you don't remember the first wedding planner book, Mallory broke off her engagement to Keith Pierce after learning he was cheating on her with Becca Cunningham. In books two and three, both Keith and Becca have been rubbing their affair in Mallory's face, and in this book, Mallory is planning their wedding. Why? Argo Funk Book Review, Argo Funk Book Review. This review was commissioned through Patreon. Patreon! Please give me your money. We meet the family at Keith's house, which Becca designed. Wow, they already built a house together? Becca has a twin sister named Samantha, her parents are Rhett and Jacqueline, and her feisty grandmother is Alma. Grandpa Glenn isn't here because he was murdered last year, and there is zero chance that Mallory won't solve that mystery before the end of the book. Keith's mother Helene takes complete control over the wedding. She changes all the decorations and the food. Alma responds by knocking Helene into a pool. As a result, Helene is the prime suspect when Alma is robbed and assaulted. I mean, Helene isn't on my suspect list. She's innocent by virtue of being a recurring character. But everyone else finds her suspicious. The thief stole things from Alma's valuable collection of Gone with the Wind memorabilia, hence the title of the book. Alma owns a movie theater, and she asks Mallory to help with the grand opening. Alma assures her that everything is already planned, so it won't be much work. After Mallory agrees, Alma gives her a giant binder full of people to call. Thanks, Alma. On the way out, Becca and Mallory see Rhett making out with a mystery woman in the parking lot. I don't know what Rhett was thinking here. My mother was almost killed and my entire family is here. I should make out with my secret girlfriend in public. For the sake of the mystery, Mallory completely forgets that Rhett is having an affair until the end of the book. At the dress fitting, Becca insults Mallory because Keith dumped her. Again, why is Mallory helping these jerks? I would not help my evil ex with his wedding. Becca falls in love with a Gone with the Wind dress, and she decides to make it a Gone with the Wind wedding. So Mallory has to completely change all the wedding plans again. They have a food tasting, and everyone gets awkward when Mallory talks about Keith's favorite food. I agree that it's awkward for Mallory to plan her ex fiance's wedding, but I don't think it's awkward for her to know his favorite food. In fact, I'd argue it's awkward that Becca doesn't know this information. She's his fiancé. We meet Becca's rival, Felicity Fournier. Felicity has been aggressive in trying to buy Alma's collection. Felicity and Becca get into a physical fight over the wedding dress, and it gets ripped. The next day, Felicity is found dead in Becca's pool, wearing the wedding dress. Keith calls his mother because, of course, his first instinct is to go running to mommy. Now the wedding theme reminds Becca of murder, so they change the wedding plans AGAIN! The last crazy characters are Eric Dempsey and Piper Hamilton. They're getting married the day after Becca and Keith. Eric interrupts a baby shower to announce HE IS BECCA'S HUSBAND! The two of them used to be married, and the divorce was never processed. Nobody mentioned this until now, because Eric was keeping it a secret for maximum drama. Eric has a Maine Coon cat named Pickles. For some reason, Mallory brings the cat with her when she goes into a courtroom to ask the judge for a divorce. I'm gonna ask the judge for a favor. Better bring a kitty with me. Mallory's boyfriend Garrett is seen going into a jewelry store. Mallory worries he's going to propose to her, and she accidentally lets it slip that she doesn't really believe in the institution of marriage. I can't entirely blame her, since every wedding of this series has been a disaster, but if she doesn't believe in marriages, why does she plan them for a living, honestly? It turns out Garrett was getting jewelry for his mother. Since he's the best boyfriend ever, he and Mallory have a serious talk, where he says he doesn't want to pressure Mallory into marriage, he loves her too much to force her into something she doesn't want. Aww, he's so nice. With the theater, someone impersonates Alma on the phone and cancels all of the vendors. Mallory has to scramble to get the vendors back. The theater is also vandalized. Jacqueline is the half-owner of the theater, 
and she's mad that Alma makes all the decisions. So, Jack Lane has a motive. Eric confesses he still has feelings for Becca. He's not sure if he wants to divorce her after all. He's also unsure if he wants to go along with Piper's plan to move to the United States after the wedding. Eric, maybe you should tell this to your fiancé, not your wedding planner. Eric reveals that Felicity had a secret boyfriend. He saw the spicy text messages on her phone. I love how he was able to see the text messages on Felicity's phone, but he wasn't able to see who they were from. Phones, how do they work? At the theater opening, one of the secondary suspects leads a protest against Gone with the Wind, because the movie is a racist soap opera. The protesters throw eggs at Alma, and the culprit interrupts the movie by starting a fire. At a Mother's Day tea, two men get into a fight at the gazebo. Mallory goes to break it up, and she discovers Eric has just been shot. On the ground is Felicity's engagement ring, and Alma's Gone with the Wind gun. They make guns based off the movie? Alma might be taking this memorabilia thing a bit too far. Eric is rushed to the hospital. Becca realizes she still loves him, so she tries to cancel the divorce. Keith finds out, so he tries to cancel the wedding. Then he tries to get back together with Mallory by kissing her without prompting. It's all a huge mess. Becca later decides she wants to be with Keith again, so Mallory writes a fake love letter from Becca and puts it inside Keith's favorite food. Food is the most romantic thing Keith can think of, so the two of them run back to each other and get married on the spot. We're at the ending, so it's time for the big reveals. Remember how Rhett was cheating on his wife, and Felicity was cheating on her fiancé? It turns out they were cheating with each other! Yes, Rhett had an affair with his daughter's rival, she was the same age as his daughter, it's sick. At Eric and Piper's wedding, Mallory finds Jules hidden inside the cat's collar. Eric confesses he and Felicity were running a smuggling operation. Only Felicity got greedy and tried to switch out the jewels for fakes. Eric tries to shoot Mallory, but he's still so hurt from his injury that the effort makes him pass out. The other culprit is Piper. She killed Grandpa Glenn because she thought he was going to break up her relationship with Eric. She shot Eric because he didn't like her plan to go straight after the wedding. Finally, she attacked Alma's theater because she was worried Alma might solve the murder mystery from a year ago. That last one doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you wait a year before trying to stop Alma from solving the mystery? Has Alma made any progress with the mystery recently? Because it seems like she hasn't. Furthermore, why attack the theater instead of attacking Alma? Because it turns out the robbery and attack on Alma was a fake. Alma did it herself in order to frame Felicity. Again, the timing strikes me as weird. Alma had to drop out of planning her theater opening because of the attack. Why risk ruining your new business like that? It makes way more sense to put off your fake crime until after the grand opening. Piper ties everyone up and tries to drown them in a pool. Only the pool is so shallow, everyone easily avoids drowning by standing upright. Piper and all the villains get punished, and in this case, all the villains means most of the characters. The end. Postbook follow-up. Throughout the entire book, Rachel complains that their business needs to expand to cover more non-wedding events, which was a little odd, because three out of the five events they plan in this book are not weddings. Also, we're told the business has already expanded, to the point where they've hired a chef named Miles, Miles has a crush on Rachel, and he never appears at any point. The subplots with Garrett and Truman were nice, as was seeing minor glimpses of characters from previous books. I think Mallory getting married to Garrett would be the perfect send-off for this series. Like the other books in the series, the ending feels a bit truncated. The chapters are shorter than normal, and the four big plot twists come at a pretty fast pace. I know some people love this style of mystery resolution, but not me. I feel like there could have been more. Maybe we could have seen part of Eric and Piper's wedding, or we could have learned how Rhett's wife reacted to the news of his affair. Overall, I like the book, although I personally know nothing about Gone with the Wind. The characters are interesting, and the story doesn't drag, outside of a scene with Felicity's parents, which I thought was a little out of place. It's definitely a worthy addition to the series. I give a Wedding Planner Mystery number 4, Gown with the Wind, an 8 out of 10.